Hello, everyone, and welcome to another webcast of Alexandra Mayers Live. I hope everyone had a really great week this week. I most certainly did. And if you want to keep up with me, remember, you can always visit www.alexandramayerslive.com. Now, I just wanted to pop on very briefly and discuss a few things in regards to me, some issues that I follow, as well as some issues that I'm involved in. Now, we're just going to jump right into it. Now, in regards to me, I have noticed that there are some parties online who are spreading the rumor that I am currently an adult webcam model. Not true. Sorry to disappoint you, but I have a regular job. I've had a regular job for quite some time now. I have not performed as an adult webcam model online or anywhere else since May of 2015. This can actually be verified via the adult webcam model service, streammate.com. Now there's some people who are like, oh, well, we see that your account is active and that the last login was just yesterday or the day before and somehow you're stealthily doing webcam shows. No, but I do still check my fan mail. A lot of people do send me fan mail through the Streammate service and I like to read it. So every time I log in to read it, it shows that I've logged in. But have I performed on that service? No, again, I haven't done so since May of 2015. Will I ever again in the future? I might. I might decide to become an adult webcam model again one day. Maybe when I'm an old cougar. <laughs> but not anytime soon. I really like my life away from adult performance at this particular phase. So that's how it's going to remain. Now, one thing that I did want to um, touch on in regards to an issue that I'm involved in has to do with my stalker and the terrorist known as Donald Carlos Sion, who is the founder of the hate crime porn WikiLeaks, a misogynistic, racist, and homophobic hate crime. Now, as of current, that website is being hosted in a country known for terrorism. Porn WikiLeaks is currently being hosted in Pakistan via a web host called Blue Angel Host. How do I know this? Thankfully, Cloudflare has been cooperating with me in regards to some efforts that are being taken to get that website offline. Cloudflare has honored the injunction that I was able to obtain through the Broward County Courts in Florida and it will probably take a bit more time. I am actually utilizing every single legal step that I possibly can to get that website offline. But um, I might not be able to do it. I might not. And if I can't, life goes on. Nothing happens. But I just want everyone out there to know that the times that that website has come offline, it's been because of my efforts and my efforts alone. The individuals who have claimed to try to get that website offline, they've all been liars. You don't need an attorney even to get that website offline. There are steps that you can take yourself. But now that the website is being hosted by a country known for terrorism, known for being homophobic, known for being racist, known for being misogynistic, Pakistan, I don't know how much further I'll be able to go in regards to getting that hate crime offline. But again, I'm taking every legal step that I possibly can. Because, you know, there are so many people out there, as I stated in my last video upload, that have approached me and been like, oh, why are you getting this in the court system? You know, there's things that we were going to do in regards to physical violence against your stalker. And I was just like, no, I don't condone that. No, no, no. So um, I just wanted to tell everyone out there, whenever you're being attacked or assaulted in the United States of America, go the legal route. Take the high road. Don't take the low road. Do everything that you possibly can legally. That way, if anything weird does happen to where the person who is doing horrible things to you disappears, you know that your conscience is clear because you took the high road and you went the legal route. So um, 
you know, that's just something that I want to touch on. Again, thank you to the people at Cloudflare for assisting me with what's going on. Um, as of current, that website is violating the terms of service of this rogue hosting company that ignores a lot of the United States legislation and laws, this Blue Angel host. But um, again, all I can do is what I can do. The fact is that Donald Carlos Sion, he's not just, you know, a computer criminal. He's a really disgustingly bad person. Not only is he terrorizing people and extorting people utilizing that website, this is a man who decided to exploit his own child, his own flesh and blood, in pornography before it was even born. Really think about how bad that is. To put your to attach your own child to pornography, that takes a special kind of evil. And he's not the only one. One of his associates, that guy known as Sean Matthew Tompkins, he's basically done the same thing. But Sean waited until after his child was born to do it. So, you know, there's a few uh, reasons as to exactly why children and pornography don't mix. But, you know, the one thing that I'm going to definitely take on as a project throughout my life is the project of attempting to get pornography featuring pregnant women made completely illegal. And I'm going to read to a lot of you an article as to exactly why. This is an article that was written in 2015, September of 2015. It was posted on the dailymail.com and the title of the article is Seven Man Gang of Pedophiles Who Groomed Pregnant Mothers So They Could Abuse Their Babies Face Jail. You know, the fact that you have Donald Carlos Sion exploiting his pregnant wife and his own child before it was born in pornography, and then you have Sean Matthew Tompkins, Donald Carlos Sion's partner, exploiting pregnant women too. A lot of what they're doing reflects a lot of the details in the article that I'm about to read to you, okay? Because I believe that these men are pedophiles, and I do believe that they are grooming their wives, girlfriends, and various pregnant porn stars that they know to submit their children to these pedophile rings. All right. A gang of pedophiles raped and abused babies, toddlers, and preschool children in attacks that were streamed over the internet to users around the world, a court heard. The ring preyed on the families of the youngsters they targeted, in one case grooming a mother and father before their baby was born. Members traveled hundreds of miles to carry out sickening attacks together or use the internet to encourage and direct others to abuse victims. Chilling online chats revealed that members of the gang who lived across the UK would offer advice on how to drug young victims and avoid injury. The seven men aged between 31 and 51 and including three previously convicted sex offenders appeared before Bristol Crown Court to be sentenced. Judge Julian Lambert said the process would take at least two days with sentences imposed on the defendants either tomorrow or on a later date. Together, the men have been convicted of 30 child sex abuse offenses, including conspiracy to rape and the rape of a child under the age of 13. They are John Denham, formerly known as Benjamin Harrop, 50 from Wiltshire, Matthew Stansfield, 35 from Hampshire, a convicted sex offender, Adam Toms, 33 years old from Somerset, Christopher Knight, 35, from Manchester. Robin Hollison, previously known as Robin Fallick, 31 years old, from Bedfordshire, a convicted sex offender. 
David Harsley, 51, from East Yorkshire, a convicted sex offender. Matthew Lisk, 33, from East Sussex. Prosecuting Robert Davies told this court he would not give in-depth details about offenses committed by the men. Quote, the manner of it is sufficiently disturbing that it would not be capable of being reported by the press in any eventuality, end quote, Mr. Davies said. Mr. Davies said the victims included babies, preschool children, and two brothers in America who were forced to abuse each other for pedophiles watching online. The investigation and prosecution of these defendants exposed a world many would not have believed, Mr. Davies told the court. The evidence discovered the shocking interest a group of men had in sexually assaulting babies, toddlers, and preschool children. A real baby was for certain abused and raped by some of those involved. Another lad was drugged and abused. Another boy was brought to a room where a defendant engaged in sexual activity for the enjoyment of two others who were watching over the internet. The youngster's presence was a big part of what was arousing them. Mr. Davies said the attacks were carefully planned involving defendants driving hundreds of miles all for the chance to perpetrate rape or cruel sexual indignities against a baby or a child. The men would communicate through Skype, the dark web, and video conferencing facilities used to stream abuse and share images. Stansfield ran a chat room specifically for those with an interest in abusing or raping young children and babies. One baby was posed to hold a piece of paper advertising such chat rooms, showing others the men had access to him, the court heard. They could link up in different ways using the internet to play abuse or watch it live and encourage the person carrying out the abuse, Mr. Davies said. All of them would know exactly what they were involved in. The evidence reveals the abuse was arranged when there was a narrow window of opportunity to be alone with a young baby or child. Other men turned up to take part or encouraged and directed others when they couldn't be there. Mr. Davies said online chat logs made for deeply disturbing reading. The men have minds that are wired to finding the idea of raping babies and youngsters a sexual turn on, he added. The men used chat names such as Active P, with P referring to pedophile, Dirty Double UK, and Pervalad 111. The National Crime Agency launched its investigation, codenamed Operation Voicer, last September after Tom's contacted police and admitted he had abused a child. Their inquiries led to the unmasking of the ring operating across the UK which had links to other pedophiles across the world. In the weeks that followed, the other six members were arrested and a further two victims were identified. Another 21 children have been the subject of safeguarding measures in relation to the investigation. Family members of those abused provided victim impact statements speaking of how they trusted the defendants near their children. Clearly, the discovery of what's happened and the abuse of trust that they had placed in these individuals is profound and long-lasting, Mr. Davies said. He said lengthy chat records, footage, and images have been recovered during the investigation, including descriptions of abuse given by the defendants in police interview. Quote, it clearly makes for almost unrepeatable, sick, depraved, cruel, callous, all of these words can be used appropriately when looking at this material, end quote, Mr. Davies added. Darren Samat, representing Hollison, said his client had two sides and had attempted suicide after the uncovering of his offending. Quote, he sought solace in a dark world, a world that effectively poisoned him, end quote, Mr. Samat added. Hollison was handed a three-year community order in July 2008 for distributing and making child abuse images. In 2011, he was jailed for 14 months for making indecent images of children and made the subject of a sexual offenses prevention order. Stephen Dent, representing Knight, who has no relevant convictions, apologized to those concerned on behalf of his client. He said Knight has offered to meet his victims' families and take part in studies to prevent pedophiles from offending. He has been tormented by these sorts of feelings for many years now, Mr. Dent added. So
So, um, yeah, pretty disgusting and horrible, isn't it? But that, in my opinion, is why the individuals attached to porn and WikiLeaks need to be thoroughly investigated. Many of the individuals attached to porn and WikiLeaks either have children or are attached to pregnant women or um, have access to children. And I have noticed over the years that Donald Carlos Sian specifically has gone out of his way to link young children to porn WikiLeaks. I've also noticed that Sean Tompkins over the years has linked his own children to his pornographic ventures, which I find extremely disturbing. Sean Matthew Tompkins participated in an interview with a radio personality known as Melissa Hill. And in that interview, he specifically stated that due to a conflict of interest, he had to stop working with an anti-child porn task force. So how is it, can you briefly describe how it is that you came to uh, run the site that you are most known for? Uh, I was, I, my uh, uncle, he headed up a, uh, like a child pornography task force thing, and he wanted so many computer savvy uh, to go troll forums, and at the time, porn sites looking for people that were, uh, you know, uploading stuff like that. So I got in with a bunch of the torrent sites and became administrator for a lot of them. And I would, basically, I would just troll it looking for people who who were putting stuff that may or may have not, may or may not been, you know, uh, child pornography. And for some people look younger than really 23. Um, and while doing that, I ran across this other guy who, um, he had a, 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 I consider it a hate site, and um, I don't know, I just got bored one day and started fucking with him. It's interesting to hear that uh, you actually um, had admirable reasons for starting the website and uh, the torrent site that you moderated, uh, because I'd heard, I'd heard other rumors about what kind of um, torrent site it was, and to find out that it was an anti-child pornography website. Or, uh, well, no, no, no. It wasn't. Those fuckers don't give a shit. It wasn't an anti. What it was was it was a regular. It was three of. They were regular torrent sites, mm -hmm. but there were people. You know, this is back when torrent sites were huge. I mean, they're they're still huge, but no one did like they were. And there's people that would do horrible things. Mm -hmm. And and I I mean, you can go there now if you research posts. You can see I'm specifically there for child pornography reasons. I go in there, get the IP, and I turn it over to somebody, and that's how it goes. And, and I did that for a year, and I stopped doing it because it became a conflict with this side. Both Sean Matthew Tompkins of the Real Porn WikiLeaks and Donald Carlos Sion of Porn WikiLeaks seem to have a very unhealthy fixation on either impregnating women or pregnant women as a whole. And I do believe that their fixation has to do with the article that I just shared with many of you. It's important to keep in mind that even though a child is still in the womb, that child does not need to be exploited in pornographic content. And both of these men are exploiting children in porn before they are born. And that is wrong and it should be illegal and it should be a crime. So we'll talk more about that another day. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and keep this webcast fairly short. So everyone have a great weekend. Again, you can follow me on alexandramayerslive.com or on YouTube via youtube.com forward slash Alexandra Mayers. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe and remember do everything you can legally so that if something strange happens in the future, you can at least make it known that you did everything in your power legally and also so that your conscience is clear. Bye-bye.